Okay, so I'm recording my, I'm recording the video screen right now, but in the aquaponics greenhouse working group, we came up with, uh, we, we tried to get the leaders from that event to, to pretty much pipe up and, and take leadership positions, but I don't know, the email was too long, nobody really took, took us on. So what we did with the people that, that did come onto the table, which was people like Paolo from uh, aquaponics lab, another guy, Ron Whitehurst, an IPM, integrated pest management guy, Jonathan, myself, and, and actually um, Peter McCoy of Radical Mycology joined it. So we had a f four or five people working on this, and we're at a point where we want to generate an infographic to, to inspire people and have a very concise, clear message, because one thing we found out was when we emailed the people initially, it was just hard to explain everything, so we think that an infographic would do a great job in terms of an infographic with a super short explainer video, like two minutes to inspire people to the vision of what this whole thing would look like while inviting open source people to participate on this with intent of publishing open plans that are absolutely free for anybody to use with an intent of building a hundred thousand of these operations that generate a hundred thousand dollars each within five years. It's a ten billion dollar chunk of the open source economy created. That's a good vision, good place to start because everybody needs food, food an, a robust food production system is an excellent project to collaborate on. So lately we've been working on initial design. So like you see here in this document in the aquaponics greenhouse working team, which um, I have in my screen. So what we came up with was basic design. Of, okay, here's the layout of the fish, of all the different crops, including mushrooms. We're still trying to put together a cabinet for growing worms. We actually are thinking of micro greens in there as well. So highly diversified system, and for the implementation in, in factory farm, which is, that's the building in the, I'm looking at page one of the aquaponics greenhouse concept slash technical design Google Doc, Google Drawing, there we have, uh, so I can paste that in the, in the link window here, so you can see where I'm looking. But in there it's basically fish, a whole ton of different vegetables, strawberries hanging off the ceiling, there's chickens, bedworms, uh, worms for beds, potentially black soldier fly larvae, uh, potentially uh, mealworms because we're finding out that a, about a two square foot area can get you about 1.5 pounds of mealworms per week off vegetative matter. Um, there's mushrooms that are planned, basically oyster mushroom that's a robust easy to grow crop, uh, sprouts against sprout and nursery area, things like that. So the next step in this process is to reach out uh, in, in this process. One of the things is that we haven't gotten the full team on board as far as all the ex expertise that we need on the development team. Um, so with, the, with that, we need to put a, get a little more people on the team. But the idea of the consortium is pretty, pretty clear. It's that we're getting a core, peop, core number of practitioners. So the requirement for the consortium is that whoever joins us is a practitioner in some sort of one of the areas of a greenhouse. So for example, us, I've done hydroponics, done, done some construction with open source brick press that might be relevant to here, modular construction. Paolo's got aquaponics experience, automation. There's Ron Whitehurst with the integrated pest management. There's Peter with with mushroom expertise that he's writing, actually writing a book to open source the kind of work that Paul Stamets has got pretty much closed up and we need a few more people. So the open source consortium is about getting those people on a team, but the real power of the method is of course to crowdsource. So with a core team that sets initial vision, we can create a process that's much more broadly applicable to much more people so that all the people that want to contribute to open source ecology or, or, or just open agriculture in general have a place to do it. So the idea is to, you know, we've already listed a, a wide number of crops. So I'm going to click on the crops document and lettuce towers, arugula, bok choy, spinach, chard, napa cabbage, rabbit, radish, kale, cabbage, broccoli, radicchio, butterleaf, uh, lettuce, melon, cantaloupe, orange, melon, mustard, basil, watercress, parsley, rosemary, green onions, alyssum, eggplant, cosmos, tomato, uh, various beneficial species, beets, peas, carrots, cucumber, tomato, strawberries, mushrooms, fish, worms, black soldier fly, aphidolites, midge, Hypoaspis, aureus, nursery area, chickens, eggs, etc. So that's some of the crops we're going to have in there. But basically it turns out that we have a large number of items that now need full technical development. So on one side is the infographic where we summarize this. 
but on the other side is the actual technical knowledge that allows us to develop each of these crops. So for each one, we have to know things like, okay, does it grow well in aquaponics? What's the time to yield? What are the yields per square foot per week? The growing needs, the cultural practice, what's the seed source? What's the cost of doing that? Um, various other things, including if you're gro using a particular method of growing, what are the, all the technical details, like the build procedure of the system, um, all the costs involved? So basically there's a spreadsheet um, a through, right now we have A through Q of different columns. I'll paste that. Paulo, this is what we're looking at right now, uh, this one. But there's that big spreadsheet, and now the time comes in figuring out, okay, for each of these crops, what are the be best aquaponic practices to do that? And, and we can select a list of several, like towers are a popular concept that has come up, but also what about beds up to organoponic beds or gravel bed beds or others or rafts? We want to pretty much document every technique for every crop and that's a kind of a process that can lend itself to crowd development so what i would call for is one on the one side we get a few more of the leaders who are who are already practitioners of various aquaponic projects and some other ones that came to my mind actually just and that's a call out to all these other groups but i've been looking at the other contacts we have along the aquaponics um, I mean, right in our backyard in Kansas City is the urban farming guys. They have a real aquaponic system, so we're going to invite those. There's um, gardenpool.org. They've got a lot of activity going on. There's Ron Finley, who's the hero of L.A. Uh, urban agriculture. Tyler Reed, that's an interesting contact, open source hydroponics. So I'm looking now at the wanted list on the wiki uh, linked right here. Uh, so that's the wanted list. Um, Pete Russell, I contact him, he's interested in being, being on a silent. The open source Arduino, the aquaponic AP Duino people, we should get them involved directly. Uh, there's maybe possibly the direct, the digital microscope people for like looking at water under a microscope, which is just a $10 conversion of, a, of an iPhone. Public Lab might be interested. Um, perennial, we need some people on perennial nursery. Um, yeah, various other people. Uh, Neil Speckman is actually working on a buried aquaponics greenhouse in Saudi Arabia. There's um, so th so that's a person I met at Permaculture Voices. But there's a few other people we can invite to the table out of those and get the leadership team. But on the other side, the the crowdsourcing of the uh, the individual crops that we're working on right now. So so basically, what we want to do right at this point, I think the um, the team here, what we can do is. Uh, just like we've done, as a, we have a good example with the icons. With the, with the icon team, we basically wrote up a procedure of how a person can generate icons. Even if you have no skills, you can learn um, Inkscape and then go, go to actual development. With that said, uh, 50 icons were generated last week, and most of them were, people, were by people who were not on the team, that, the core working team. So, so this method is working. We can show that uh, if we define a procedure for doing this research, then we can get this crowdsourcing and involve a lot of people. So I would plan on uh, uh, spamming this, the social networks with this. Basically an invitation for other people to, to get involved. But at the, as the core team here, which we also invite others to join us in, um, we'd like to uh, perhaps best use our time, best use of, use of our time would be to generate the procedure for how we go about this research of, of each crop. So basically if you can document that on a Google Doc, um, so that we can show people and maybe do it. This video can be an introduction, but also maybe a quick couple of minute explainer video. Okay, here's how we do the, each crop, what we need for each, and then we can spawn a bunch of collaborators doing this remotely. Um, Paulo, what do you think? Can we start on a document to document the development process for others? Uh, any comments on that? I think that's a good idea. If we can break down yeah. all the tasks. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to need a person or a small group. Yep. And three or four people to come with the vision, what we want to achieve, yep. and the overall design of the system. This yep. group should be in charge of, as well, to break this down into small components. Then we open and publicize that we want to develop yep. this, the way it should be developed. 
because uh, I don't think the crowdsourcing will work to complete the whole project. Crowdsourcing no. will work a very nice set for micro tasks or things that have already been aligned that need to be developed and how they need to be developed. So I think the next step is is view this this overall vision document, everything, mm -hmm. and break down all the different work that we need to do in order to do yeah. the whole set. Yeah. Uh, you said, uh, why did you say that microtasking does not lend itself to, to crowd development? Because the model of the aqua, the icons group was we we pretty much gave, uh, listed, okay, here's all the icons we want. We gave a procedure for how to do one and we told people how to do it and how to upload it and stuff like that. So in that sense, the microtasking is a very effective way. What was your comment on the microtasking? Yeah, yeah. The vision right. itself won't let into the development unless we have a list of all the activities and all the tasks we need to perform, the micro tasks. Yeah, yeah. So we need the micro tasking in order for these to flourish using all these yeah. outsourcing development ways. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then a question. That's the thing. Yeah. Because it is quite a large project. So there are so many things to be integrated. So mm -hmm, we need mm -hmm. to over initial phase, which is view the whole concept and somehow integrate and, and document all the technologies we need. And then after this is done, things will naturally evolve in terms of a better fish feeder will yep. evolve from this, mm -hmm. uh, a better way to build a, like a, a grow bed or, or anything. So that's the way forward, yeah. Yep, yep. So, what oh, I would propose... Yeah, I need to excuse, I need to go now. Yep, so okay. My, my connection might, might not good because I'm going to be switching from... No problem. Okay, to, and I'll, I'll just wrap up this meeting uh, talking to myself and anyone who's listening on to the recording. Okay, thanks, Paolo. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so just to wrap up this meeting, so what we want to do is, at this yeah, point... I'm, I'm I'm going yeah. to be I might be with you. I, I just not sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, so what we'll do is, so there's a huge number. So once again, in this spreadsheet, we've got the basic modules. Okay, so the, there's crops, there's some of the beneficial insects and other items. But the thing is, for each one, we, if we treat each one as a specific step. So for example, we got lettuce. So one, one object is lettuce towers, but if we go below that, maybe it's like lettuce rafts. So, so basically get it down to, um, get this down to the smallest possible element. So there's other ways to do lettuce. Like for example, you can do lettuce gutters um, or lettuce in soil. So, I mean, let's put that in there. What does lettuce in soil look like? Because we'll set up you want to experiment and then figure out which ones are the most appropriate for the integrated system. We'll, we'll implement a basic system and then over time it will keep evolving. So at best, we do very modular ways of, of designing the entire greenhouse. So lettuce and soil and, and you can say organoponic, organoponic soil. Okay. Um, now also in this, what this allows us to do, instead of worrying about crops and systems, let's put the systems of how to grow them in the individual crops. So, for example, in lettuce towers, we'd have to talk about, okay, there's the vertical structures. In lettuce rafts or, or the organoponics, we're going to have to talk about, oh, this is the bed, and here's how I build the bed under the, the build procedure um, shown here for the bed. So, uh, we can take care of both the growing technologies like the bed systems and whatever how we feed it with water and so forth and the plants themselves in one group okay so that's a definite microtasking that we can do for all the crops we can continue to break this down into all the possible systems and then spawn this uh, make an open invitation for a design sprint where we invite people with a, uh, a small explainer video and this video here as a, as a beginning 
for people to get involved in the whole process. So, so I'll quit at this. We'll, we'll also produce the explainer video on the overall um, aquaponics project. And we might try to put together a, a, um, an infographic with a short explainer video just so we're able to leverage all the co co collaboration as quickly as we can because we find that one of the challenges of this project is getting everybody on up to speed like we somewhat failed on getting everybody from the the permaculture voices conference involved because i think the mail you know it's just people said okay too long then too long then read kind of thing um so we're trying to get better at communicating the vision such that um we continue the process in the most effective way because one of the principles is that the the more quickly and effectively you can um communicate the subject matter to people especially if we're pushing boundaries that the better and we find that instructional videos infographics are going to be have to be critical to that part so i'll i'll end the soliloquy here hopefully you're having fun listening to this and join us for design sprints on this bye bye hang that up <laughs>